Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm joined here today by Maximiliano Fertman. Welcome. Thank you. And we're at the Fluent Conference, and we're here to talk about, uh, well, and we're going to talk about the obvious thing. <laughs> the glass. Yeah, so we're going to talk about Google Glass. Now, there's a, there's a lot of things we could talk about in the context of, of Google Glass, but what I really want to talk about is for developers. So from a developer's perspective, mm -hmm. what do people need to know to start thinking about developing apps for this very new interface? Okay, so first we have two kind of uh, things to think about. So first we have the device today and the device tomorrow, right? So today we can create uh, mirror API apps. So the name is Glassware. We are okay. creating Glassware. Glassware. So Glassware is basically a cloud-based technology. So we are working on a web server, basically. So we can use Java, PHP, Python, Node.js, so any kind of uh, server-side language to create apps that we are going to push information to the device or to, to Google's cloud. And Google Cloud is going to synchronize with my glass. Um, we can also like uh, add some kind of a pool mechanism for uh, the share mechanism. So from, let's say I'm taking a picture of you now, and I can share that picture with any app that I have installed. OK, so Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Facebook, Twitter, or it can be any app. Okay. Right? Uh, the other thing that we can do as, as uh, a cloud-based developer, as a web developer, is that we can subscribe to some events. So right now, for example, we can subscribe to the share intent, but also to location. So basically, uh, any app that I can install in my class can know my location, like every one hour or every 10 minutes, and then it can update information on my class. So you could pull that information for an app that you're building. Yeah. So, so any, any sort of web developer who's familiar with building apps is in, is it it's already pretty set up. Yeah, to do we this. are talking about the RESTful services, and we are talking about OAuth for for authorization. So basically, it's uh, really simple, and, and Google has uh, some APIs already available to instead of for us to work with the low level HTTP request, we can just use the APIs, and it's really easy to use. So that's the now. That's the now. Yeah. So what's the what's um, the next? So the next is, of course, we, uh, this is going to be in the final product. I mean, maybe it's not, not in the same way because it's still a prototype. So, uh, but uh, there will be also a GDK, okay. the a glass development kit for native development. So to create offline experiences and offline apps that this is not ready yet. So here on my, my glass right now is basically an Android device. Um, even I can install any Android app in, in the debug mode. So but basically it's not optimized. So all the apps are not optimized for this kind of, of, of device, glass right? There, for Glass. So um, basically now we can create Android Java apps for Glass, but it's not optimized for that. There is no home screen or there is no applications menu to see all my apps. So right? it's pretty so, rough right now. Yeah. And Google is working in the GDK, but it's not ready yet. So for creating some kind of uh, augmented reality apps, we need to wait for the GDK. Okay. But if you ha if you're a web developer and you have a website or you're a newspaper or any kind of web online service, well, then you can start using the Mirror API. And and so you said something about augmented reality. Mm -hmm. like, talk to me a little bit more about what that really means in this context. Well, in this context, first, as, as you can see, I mean, the glass is not basically covering my eyes, right? It's basically up of my side, so I, I, I can look up and see what's happening here on my glass. Um, so basically, it's a kind of augmented reality. The only application right now that is taking advantage of that is Maps or, or the Drive app. So basically, I can say, hey, Google, or um, OK Glass gave me directions to the nearest Starbucks. Uh, and then it's, it's an augmented reality because I can move my head and I can see how the map is pointing me to the right direction. I see. OK. So for those kind of apps, you need to wait for the GDK. OK. What else? I mean, there's there's code, there's SDKs, there's all of these kinds of things that people are typical, you know, typically used to thinking about. What else do developers need to be thinking about when it comes to Google Glass that, that they might not be prepared for well, yet? Well, the first thing is to understand the device, or because a lot of people are thinking this is the mobile phone replacement, and at least now, it's not. It's a companion. It's not a replacement. So basically, the idea of the device itself is not just to replace the mobile phone. So I will not be able to do the same things that I can do with my phone. This is just for different kind of uh, use cases, 
right? Small use, uh, smaller use cases, like for example, I want to get a direction, a direction, or I want to know something like um, what's the weather like in, uh, in Mountain View, um, that kind of stuff. Or I can receive news from my friends, from social networks. So first, the, the most important part is to understand how to fit into the device, because it's not just creating or uh, migrating your mobile app, right? Just for a transparent background. Right. It's not just that, right? Uh, so you need to first un understand what the device uh, is and, and what it's not. Yeah, so I mean, that, that, that really rang true with me. It's not just a mobile app for a transparent background. Exactly, yeah. um, and I guess it's hard for me to wrap my head around this quite yet, to be perfectly honest. I don't, I think that's going to be a challenge for people. Yeah, even, even there is some kind of a simulator online, so you can see how your content uh, will be rendered here. But if you don't try it yourself, it's really difficult to understand how you are seeing that on the screen. Right? Yeah, that's, and I was going to say, that, that seems like a real challenge to me. I mean, with, 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 a fo with phone development, you can run it in a simulator. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, it's not so hard to go get a couple different kinds of phones. That thing's running a cool, what, 1700 right now? Uh, yeah. So, so when, what do you more. recommend? What do you recommend for somebody who's trying to actually understand what that environment's going to be well, like? Well, right now, unfortunately, I mean, the, the Explorer program is closed. So, uh, you, I mean, Google is trying to open it in, in the next couple of months. But the, the good news is that uh, we don't need to wait too much time. I mean, it, I, I, I'm seeing like less than, in less than a year, uh, we're going to see devices on the street. I mean, maybe they're not going to be the, the, the best devices for this kind of tool, but it's going to be like uh, consumer prototypes because, again, we are starting with this kind of devices. And if you ask me, I'm not sure yet if this is going to be the future of devices. I'm not sure. I mean, because even it's not up to us. I mean, it's not up to, to me or any other geek out there. So it depends on, let's say, normal people. Uh, and, oh, and normal people. So we need to wait for <laughs> normal people to get these devices to see if this is going to be the future or not. So I don't know. I mean, but as a developer, I'm trying to always try understand all the new technologies out there and how to create experiences for those technologies. Well, that's perfect. Great. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting me. All right.